Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're going to carry on looking at text and we're going to start looking at animators in After Effects. So these are text animators because you'll notice over here in the character panel that we can't animate say the font or the kerning or the, the scale of these items. These are not animatable properties and yet we can animate them by using animators. Now animators are found in the timeline so we go down to the layer that says this is text we can open up the layer and then you'll see that we've got text now we've looked at lots of these options here but we also have got this button that says animate and when you click on the button you get a whole bunch of options as to what you can animate but when you select one of these options you get a whole bunch of things appearing in the timeline and we're going to start off by trying and understanding what all of these are so I'm going to select scale we're going to animate the scale of the text so I'm going to click scale and all of a sudden I get something that appears in the timeline. Firstly I get something called Animator 1, and then I get Range Selector 1, and I've got Scale. Now, if I make sure that I'm on my Selection tool, and I open up this Range Selector, and I was to click on the word Start, something appears on my screen. I get a red line here at the beginning of the text, a little triangle or arrow, and then at the other end of the text I get another line with another triangle or arrow, and if you hover over that, you'll see that you can actually move these arrows on screen or alternatively you'll see that you've got a start and an end function down here in the timeline and if you scrub those you're moving these lines now these lines are showing you a range and what we're saying is inside this range so inside these two lines the effect will be applied outside of these lines so if these lines should happen to move across and I've got an effect applied it will only affect the text that is inside these lines the start at the end of our range so if I take it back to the beginning and I increase scale down here in the timeline so at the moment it's a hundred percent let's take it right up to 173 you can see inside the lines everything is scaled up to 173 percent if I start to pull in these lines you'll see that everything that's outside of the lines pops back to where it originally started. I can go back until, in fact, I can pull them all back so that they meet and nothing is affected, and then I can pull them all the way back. So you can see that if I can animate the start or I can animate the end, I can choose which characters are going to be affected by this scale property because they are either inside or outside of this range. Thus, it's called the range selector. Now, we also have a third item, which is called offset, which saves us having to animate the end and the beginning if we just want to affect one letter at a time. So I'm going to take this end and drag it so it just affects the T of this is text. So you can see that the start of our range is at 0% and the end of our range is at 8%. And then I have offset at 0. Now, offset effectively ties these two items together so that when you scrub offset through, as long as these aren't separately animated, they will move through at the same percentage difference through the text one way or the other. So if I scrub offset to a negative value, nothing is affected. As I start to pull it through, the range stays the same. And the text comes up and goes down inside that range, pretty much one letter at a time, although it does slightly overlap at times. So there you go, that's scrubbing it through and that's using a range selector to select which bits of the text are going to be affected. Now, not only can I choose which bits of the text are going to be affected by selecting the range that I want to use, I can also add to this particular animator. Now here it is, animator one, opposite animator one, I've got a little button that says add. And if I click add, I've got something called here called a selector, which we're not going to look at at the moment, and properties. So I can choose another property to add inside this range. So if I was to choose, say, skew, and you'll see that skew is down here, and I can move up skew, I can actually make the letter twist. I'm going to do it quite a bit just for effect. 
Now, inside this range, I am affecting both scale and skew. And if I was to animate across this range, you'll see that the letters in turn scale and skew across the screen. So let's just animate them, take it all the way off screen. Make sure, by the way, when you do that, that you just get it off screen. Sometimes people scrub this quite a long way negative, and then you actually have to wait quite a long time until it starts. So when you do pull it negative, pull it so it's just off screen, hit the stopwatch, go for the period of time you want to be, I'm going to say three seconds, and then scrub it through till it is just off the other side. So the same thing applies, just off, that's the perfect place to be. And I'm going to end my work area there by hitting the N key on my keyboard, beginning and end. So when I hit my space bar, I'm doing scale and skew inside that range that goes through. When I click back on my range selector, you can see there it is working through one thing straight after the other. So that's the basics of a range selector. However, notice at the top we still have an animate button as well as the add button. And in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to rename this animator, we're going to add a different animator that works separately to the one that we've already got. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.